Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We are in the studio in Palo Alto, the CUBE studio offices for a CUBE conversation, talking about storage, enterprise storage, cloud, and all the things that are keeping us up at night and the excitement that we see every day out in the field. So we're really excited to be joined by Noam Shendar, who comes in all the time for Zadar Storage. And he brought in a special guest, Dave Elliott, Global Product Lead Storage, Google Cloud Platform. Welcome, Dave. Yeah, thanks for having me. So uh, we'll get right into it. Big announcement. Noam, tell us all about it. Sure. We're super excited to announce that we're now connected up to the Google Cloud Platform. Uh, our customers know already that we've connected to the other two major providers, Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure, and we've been working diligently on what we think is the most exciting addition to that, and that's Google Cloud Platform. It's available right now. It's immediately available. It means that any customer of Google Cloud Platform can take advantage of our award-winning enterprise storage as a service connected directly to virtual machines at Google Cloud. So it, it, it clearly, you know, completes the, the trifecta, which, which we know, you know, that is the power right now in the public cloud. But what's special about Google uh, Cloud Platform that you can get that the other providers don't offer to your customers? Google Cloud is special because we all know Google, the search engine company, and because Google uh, has been doing this for so long, they have the existing infrastructure. So Google has global data centers with the networks connecting those global data centers such that customers, wherever they are, uh, can connect through hundreds of edge locations for low latency access to the cloud. So whereas with the other major clouds, the customer has to be physically close to the actual cloud location for optimal latency, Google Cloud customers have far more flexibility in terms of location, and we think this will do even more to get more people on board cloud with their enterprise applications. Okay, so Dave, what I want to know is are you going to paint the, Z the Zadara rack colors. <laughs> I think you've got a Google bike out front, the yellow, the green, the red. <laughs> right. So what does this mean for for, uh, for Google? Obviously you guys have storage, you have massive amounts of right. storage. We all have lots of stuff on on our Google on our personal Google storage as well as our, you know, little the cube um, storage. So what does this mean for your customers? So um, so really, it, it, to put it in context, uh, as, as enterprises move to the cloud, there, there are different requirements from maybe peer play startups. So we've had fantastic success. We've been in, in the cloud business now for, I think, nine years. Um, but as we mature as a business and as customers mature and, and make it clear that they want to move more and more workloads to the cloud, their requirements, though, still look significantly in many cases like the requirements from the old days, right, from right, the right. legacy vendors. I'm a storage guy, and I know there's certain there's certain requirements around SLAs, performance, uh, the ability to to move between clouds from on-prem to the cloud. And so, as Google matures, as as our customers ask for these type this type of functionality, we are able to meet those requirements by working with Zadara. So this really gives you the yes, we have that checkbox when you're getting into a hardcore enterprise guy that's maybe new to the cloud, or you know he wants that comfort level right. uh, that he's going to have all the stuff he had before but now exactly. part of it's going to be sitting in your guys' so infrastructure. So it's, it's, it's two use cases, right? It's the traditional customer, consumer, uh, customer, um, uh, enterprise customer who has today their workloads running on-prem or in private, um, their own private data centers or colos, um, and it's the customers today that are running on our compute instances um, who love our compute instances, but perhaps are holding back from moving some of those more delicate workloads to the cloud. So those right. are two, two general use cases. Right, because that's, that's really the point. It's not just about storage for the customer. The storage is, is an enabler for his applications, exactly. right? So this really opens up a whole other set of applications for the other Google services that doesn't really compete directly with the storage. Exactly, exactly, that's it. So as, as customers move, you know, the really interesting things happen is that customers move those workloads to the cloud. They can then take advantage of, you know, layered on other services like, like data analytics and machine learning and things like that. And so it's really about, um, really everything I think about this relationship is about helping enterprises move, migrate more and more workloads to the cloud in a more seamless way. Right. So it's, I don't know, kind of a good news, bad news for you, Noam. You know, the, the good news is now you're partnering with Google. The bad news is they got a lot of, <laughs> they got a lot of reach and distribution. Are you guys ready? You know, what's the impact on your business now having this humongous uh, partner distribution network, uh, potential new client network? Are you guys ready to support that? What kind of new challenges does that present to you guys? It'll, it'll present growth challenges, but we're, we're ready. So what, what we've done is made sure that we have the support infrastructure in place, and also the sales infrastructure in place. Uh, so if customers need help prior to the sale, during the sale, or after the sale, we have 
different teams that handle this, and we have partners as well. That's a big change for us in the last couple of years, switching from a fully direct model to a model that's now 60% partner-driven, and, and that number is growing. Those partners are helping us, with, especially with integration. The customer may need storage, but also they may need to deploy other applications at Google Cloud. Those partners put it all together and provide uh, a, a single, let's use the positive expression, a, 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 a single back to pat. <laughs> <laughs> a single back to pat, not throw the choke or uh, yes. drink your own champagne as they like to say. Exactly. Um, and one of the things we talked about off air before we turn on the cameras is, is that you were excited about is really the distribution um, of Google and specifically Google access points because mm -hmm. latency is real. Um, as, as Grace Hopper said, you know, the speed of light is just too damn slow. So you really need those access points to get to the compute and the store to make cloud work the way you want it to work. Exactly. For example, a common request is to connect remote clients to a central storage repository. So with, the, with, with most clouds, that's limited by a public network and the latencies and the hops that come along with that. With Google's peering capabilities, pretty much everybody is closer to the compute that of Google than other than other clouds. And we know this because when we do the search and we get the answer back in 0. 0.0012 seconds, right. Right. A big, a big piece of that is is the latency between us and where, where whatever Google location is doing that search for us. The compute benefits from that. The cloud, the Google Cloud benefits from that, and therefore our customers do too. Right. And Dave, and I presume this is just one of a number of steps within Google Cloud's, you know, kind of pursuit of the enterprise and moving in more. Uh, you know, kind of enterprise customers, enterprise workloads into the Google Cloud platform. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's one hundred percent accurate. I mean, we we continue to build out the organization. We build out part. We're building out partnerships, and of course, the products to better meet the needs of of uh, larger enterprises that um, that have just unique needs. Right. I will I will um, thank you for pointing out the, the the differentiator on the network. It's something that I think people intuitively understand, but. Um, you know the the uh, the depth and breadth of, of our network networking expertise has been un unbelievable. As opposed to most cloud vendors, we want to get the data, we want to get the bits onto our network as quickly as possible because we keep it on our network because we're so efficient in being able to move the bits from point A to point B. Right. And and I think that's really the big the big differentiator and why you see you know su such better response, such such lower latencies. So and it's not just about the latency; it's also about the the predictability of the. Absolutely. Of the and so, just to be to clarify, so once it gets into the Google network, wherever that point of access is, you, then it's contained within the Google network. Right, right. So we right we've innovated around networking for for uh, since our our early days. Um, things like uh, OpenFlow and software defined uh, networking are things that um, have uh, you know great genesis inside of inside of Google. And so for us to move that data onto our network, it's just more, uh, again, faster and more reliable for our customers and for our own data, right? We're able to leverage our own infrastructure um, uh, for our own services. I think we have seven services now with over a billion customers. And uh, just out of sheer necessity, we've had to innovate in and around networking. Right, yeah, we've done a couple of peer shows where you know, it just reinforces the fact you want to get off the public backbone as quickly as you can, depending on however you need to, to communicate with either your own internal stuff or, or with somebody else. And then, Dave, is this kind of a signal of, that you guys will be bringing in other uh, products, obviously not necessarily a competing software, software-defined product, but just other kind of enterprise-y uh, type solutions to offer your customers in, in pursuit of this kind of ongoing enterprise path? Yeah, I think I think that um, there are a lot of similarity, similarities, if I were to draw, draw the Venn diagram between what um, uh, a high performance successful customer like Snapchat, um, one of one of our larger customers, or Spotify, uh, what they require, and what um, what some of the larger enterprises uh, or even smaller enterprises with just very very large, you know, compute intensive, storage intensive. Uh, requirements um, are so there is a Venn diagram. There's a lot of overlap, and we continue to to, uh, to leverage our own internal investments in things like uh, live migration of compute uh, instances. Um, things around innovative pricing um, to really drive home uh, the, the the low cost of cloud and the agility of cloud. Things like customizable VMs, so you only get the the actual machine that you need. Um, so we're going to continue to innovate around that and be able to make sure that both enterprise customers and um, our you know sort of the 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 high flying startups um, still have the ability to to take advantage of it. Right, right. And is that new information for you guys that you can leverage? Because uh, clearly, like a Snapchat, which uses massive amount 
of data. You have massive growth rates. I mean, you have these, we talk a lot about the consumerization of IT in terms of the experience of interacting with an application on your phone that you want to be like when you interact with Snapchat, although I can never figure Snapchat out, so I swipe <laughs> left or swipe right. Um, um, but where you can start to use some of those lessons that you guys have learned in your broader application experience to bring to bear with your solution as well as for your customers. Exactly. So we, we have two goals in this relationship. One is, one is to help the existing customers of, of the Google Cloud Platform do more. So that means uh, take the existing applications and maybe they can benefit in terms of better performance reliability. So do more also means bring new applications into the Google Cloud Platform. Maybe the customer moved some early applications over into the cloud but left others on-prem. We'd like to see those move into the cloud as well. And then the remaining goal is to move customers who are not at all in the cloud into Google Cloud. Right. And, th and by by providing these capabilities, we think that's that's the last impediment. The customer may sit there and say, yes, the compute capabilities are, are fantastic. I trust them. The network capabilities, we just talked about them. They're, they're world-leading. Storage, I'm not sure I have what I need. I don't know if I have the IOPS that I need. I don't know if I have the uptime that I need, or even protocol support or features, disaster recovery, snapshot, snap shots, <laughs> et cetera. Uh, but now they're there, so there's no reason not to go. Yeah, it's exciting time, so congratulations. Um, a really a big announcement, obviously, tremendous infrastructure by partnering with Google. I mean, I don't know that there's anything quite like it uh, developed over all these years. I talked to some of the other gentlemen, like, how many people are at Google? Like, 65,000. I'm like, wow, it's not the little startup that we that we think of over in, uh, in Mountain View anymore. And, and congratulations, uh, Dave, too, to really make an aggressive move on the enterprise with, with really putting a flag in the, in the ground, if you will. Well, we're just, I think we're just at the beginning. Um, I think the next, the next several years, in fact, next decade or so, is going to be a pretty exciting time. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by uh, the Palo Alto offices of theCUBE. Good to see you. Thank you, too. Thank All you. All right. Dave Elliott, Noam Shendar, Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Stop.